your test. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We'll work on it. I invite you to rise for a thanksgiving for baptism, the gift of God that encourages us and embraces us for life. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. So let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as sons and daughters making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing praise. <clears throat>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The first reading today is from Acts 5, 27 through 32. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witness to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the law. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> my 
my strength and my song and has become my salvation. <coughs> Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts val valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O oh Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Form a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. You are my God, and I will exalt you. The second reading is from Revelation 1, 4 through 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, 
who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that first day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated, and I believe there's a children's sermon today. There is. Does this work better? Yes, that works better. Oh. Okay. You know, I think this is high enough. And my legs feel pretty good today. You know? I think I could do a backflip off of here. And the kids are thinking, I want to see that. 
And my wife is at home thinking, please don't try that. <laughs> and that makes, that makes all, that, that makes sort of all of us in agreement because I don't think I could do it either. We all have doubts. And if somebody says something that we think is impossible or nah, that couldn't happen. We think, yeah, I, 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 I want to see that before I believe it. And that's natural. You know, as people, that's natural. And we just heard a story from the Bible that was like that. Jesus had risen from the dead. He had appeared to many of the, to all the other disciples. And so they told the, the other disciple who wasn't there, Thomas, they said, we saw Jesus. Thomas said, no, no I, don't think, I don't think that happened. I'm going to have to see this to believe it. Well, the next time they met, Thomas was there, and Jesus appeared again. He said, Thomas, it is I. Touch the holes in my hand. And Thomas was, then he believed. And Jesus had the, the most remarkable thing. He said, you know, are you only believing because you see? Blessed are the people who believe because they cannot see me, because they cannot experience me. And that's who we all are, right here. I mean, no one has appeared to Jesus as we come into church and say, hi, how are you doing? He's not there at the door greeting us. It's a matter of faith. We have to believe because we don't get to see him. And for, this has happened for thousands of years. And yeah, blessed be us because we have faith. We know that Jesus is there even though we don't see him. And that's something that we just have to rely on. We have to have faith in that. We have to know that without seeing it. And that's just, I, I just think that's remarkable that we do this throughout our lives. Let's have a brief word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of your son that we may believe in him without seeing him, that we may have faith. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Well, this is Sunday, first Sunday after Easter, the second Sunday of the Easter season. I've been a pastor now for this year. 40 years and every Sunday after Easter we have this text that's 40 years of Thomas what do you say all right I'll tell you a quick story a while ago a long time ago I had a parishioner who was a very faithful member of the congregation and uh, she was married to a fellow who was not Christian, but um, he, in solidarity with his wife, would come to church quite often. He didn't mind coming to church, even though, as he said, you know, it's not really my thing. He said, you'll see me any Sunday, really, um, except for one, Easter. He said, I, I just can't come because it's too outrageous, it's too... I can't buy that ever, so you will never see me on Easter. And you know what? I understand this guy. This is a hard thing to believe. I mean, it really is that the guy around after he was dead, it's a hard thing. And last week we heard the story of the empty tomb. Well, you know, you can kind of buy that and figure out a reason for it and all that. And, but this... It's hard to believe. He gave his life for me. I can take the weight of sin that lies upon my shoulders. Uh, lies with those who say they saw him. Okay? But if you buy those stories, even those stories, like the one today, they all have this very weird quality to them. Even that raises some doubt in your mind. For example, for example, just take the Jesus comes 
but the doors are locked. And poof, there he is. And he delivers his speech and, you know, peace be with you and all that. Poof, he's gone. You know, it's something out of a sci-fi flick. It went into a multi-universe dimension or something, you know. It's very weird. These stories are very strange. I don't know if you read last week from John. Did you read that one? But Mary comes and sees John, I mean, sees Jesus, and Jesus says, wait, don't touch me. I'm in some multi-dimensional state. It's very strange, these stories. And we never because it's the one for Easter evening, but you might remember this one in Luke where the two disciples are walking along the path of Emmaus and somebody joins them and they have a good conversation because they don't recognize Peter. These are hard things to believe. And they watch him pops in and pops out. That's a tough thing. And even the Bible... The early Christians had a response to this. It's a very important celebration in the church, and yet we kind of pass over it as Christians. So let me remind you. Have you heard of this thing called the Ascension? Okay. Well, you know, what that Ascension stands for in the Christian understanding is to say this. Whatever those first disciples experienced... That doesn't exist anymore. Why? Because Jesus ascended into heaven. So, it's like the Bible's way of saying, however you're going to experience the resurrected Jesus, it's going to be in a different way than they had. Got it? I'm looking at a lot of blank faces. You seem very quiet today. Got it? Okay. Yeah, um... The Bible is saying to us, to Christians ever since, yes, may or may have been, there was this time when Jesus was doing these weird things as a resurrected body, but hey, grow up church, it doesn't happen that way anymore because Jesus ascended. It's the way of the church saying, look, you're not going to experience the resurrected Jesus in that same way. And it's a way that the church was saying, look, you didn't see him in your grilled cheese. He wasn't in the tapestry on the wall. It's changed. It's different because Jesus, as a resurrected Lord, comes to us in a spiritual way, a different way, a new way. And by that word spiritual, I don't necessarily mean just woo-woo. I mean Jesus comes to us through our lives through our experiences, our experiences with others. Jesus comes to us through story. Jesus, as the resurrected Lord, comes to us through church, through prayer. Jesus, as the resurrected Lord, comes to us through our trauma, our difficulties, and our blessings. And we Lutherans are bold enough to say he comes to us in bread and wine, which we don't have today, but anyhow. Jesus comes to us in a new way, a spiritual way. Jesus is resurrected, not just as some church act, or excuse me, cursed circus act is what I wanted to say, as some circus act, but it's resurrected into our lives. And this is maybe the most important phrase, so you can write this one down for today. Jesus is resurrected because now we are bound into a relationship of grace. And that is all around you. It's in this room. Jesus is resurrected to you. To you and me. So what happened to those first disciples through Thomas and those folks? You know what? We say in our creed in accordance with the scriptures, but I always read that as the scriptures are telling you what people wrote down what they believed, and that's fine. But what really happened? I don't know. I can buy that. But the one thing I can buy absolutely is whatever happened, however you might want to discount it or be skeptical about it, one thing did happen that to me is undeniable. Whatever happened, they came away convinced 
convinced that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And I can kind of understand that. Imagine, if you can, be those disciples for a moment. Imagine that um, you had been following this guy for a long time and watched this guy healing people and proclaiming these incredible messages about to the poor and about a world that is now filled with hope and with acceptance and love and grace and peace for the whole world. And you've been watching this guy and you've been sensing this guy in your life. Try to imagine that. And you've been walking with him on the road and experiencing what he experienced. And you formed, here's the key word, a relationship with him. A relationship that promised you life, that promised you harmony, that promised you grace, peace. You've been walking with him and you saw in this man something incredible, an incredible relationship with this guy. And now imagine, as they did, saw this relationship out to its very end, to a bloody cross, watched it become mangled there in front of them, gone. And then on a day like this, On a day like this, whatever happened, they were convinced, absolutely, unequivocally convinced that that relationship that they knew so deeply was still there, still with them. I can kind of understand that. Can you? Can you? I can kind of understand that. Whatever happened, however you want to read those stories, I don't really care. But one thing is true. So skeptics, take your shots. But you know, they came away, whatever happened, absolutely convinced that the relationship they knew with this guy could never die again. It was in their lives ever. It was always there. It was always going to be there. It was there with them now. And they believed it so much that they put their lives on the line and told the world about it, even though the world didn't want to hear it and was skeptical about it, of course. And I'll tell you something else. That happened. Whatever you want to say, that happened. They put their lives on the line, changed the world, and the world has been changed. I mean, we're here 2,000 years later talking about this. That's a change in the world, a deep, deep change in the world. They were that convinced. Their relationship that they had watched and experienced could never die in their lives. They knew it. Well, that's what happened, huh? It still happens. In fact, That's really the case for all of us. We're bound in a relationship of grace. It's all around you. It's with you always. And you're blessed by it. You're blessed with... Well, I'd like you to do this. Everybody ready? Yes, I can sense that you are alive. You didn't make that happen. You didn't deserve it, but there you are, and you're bound into a relationship of grace by that simple thing, really. You're bound into a relationship that's filled with grace. It's filled with life. It's filled with forgiveness. Don't believe that? You know, even physicists note something that's very strange. They look into the quantum world and see that time could go either direction. But in the macro world, the one we inhabit... Time moves in one direction only, which means the past is past. It's gone. And while people may never let you forget it, and you may have trouble forgetting it, it is gone. It is something to be learned from, 
and to move on from and to live out into your life again, you're forgiven. You're bound into a relationship of grace. You should be going, yay. You're bound into a relationship of thank you with life and forgiveness and something else too. A hope that this life is not just some meaningless walking through time, but in fact is woven into a, an eternal life of grace. You're woven into it. You're in a relationship, and there's no way that you can not be in it. It's a guarantee. It's there for you. You're in a relationship of grace. Whether you believe it or not, it is there. And we're embraced by that all the time in this room, in your life. So while I might have a little trouble looking at those stories and saying, yeah, you know, there was Jesus eating fish, one thing I know is that they experienced the same relationship of grace that you have and that I have and can never be taken away. So here's your test. Christ is risen. It took you time. So we'll try it one more time again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. the Nicene Creed in your book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was the heart of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and he came to a human. For our sake, he was crucified by the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the search 
congregation to be seated because we have a, a, a glorious moment to welcome a new member into the life of St. John's. So I invite uh, Aaron Morrison to come forward with Brenda. With Brenda. Hi, welcome. Aaron comes to us from Shepherdstown, and so it's good to see you. You have just made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If you do, then say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Help and, help and guide me. People of God, let's see if they do any better. People of God, do you promise to support Aaron and pray for her in her life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. They've done it before. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Aaron the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice with this new sister in Christ and welcome her. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world to which the congregation answers. Amen. Amen. Welcome. God bless you. You can remain seated for the prayers. So let us offer our prayers to the Lord. Holy one who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy, direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy, uphold your children who cry out to you Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. And we bring before you those who are on our hearts and minds in need, in need of your healing, your presence, and your power. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sounds, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine and for all who are overtaken by violence and war. We ask, Lord, that your grace would bring wisdom, good judgment, peace our toward war to place. And with the people of Ukraine, bring them to the relief they need. God, in your mercy, yeah. we pray for new sister Erin and ask that she find here at St. John's not just welcome, but a chance to live out her life service to those who are in need with this congregation. God, in your mercy, yeah. give us the words of your saint who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your son, Lord and God. Through Jesus, our leader, empower us to according to his ways. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the mercy of God, respond to your prayer. Renew us by the light
life-giving Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Peace to one another in some appropriate and safe way.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. I don't know if there are any announcements. Should people take a seat? Please. Um, the announcement folder in your bulletin is rather complete. There are a few modifications. Um, the call committee is continuing to meet. Please pray for Priscilla as I believe her surgery is tomorrow. So keep her in your prayers uh, and the call committee as well that they continue on with this necessary work. Um, there was a, an addendum in the announcements about the Easter Sunday children's sermon that she wanted to make sure that everybody read. So please read that carefully. It's really, really neat. Uh, the yard sale, the church yard sale happening on the 30th. Please make sure that you get everything that you want here this week. We are looking for help. Um, I think Linda was um, collaring people as they came in, so to speak. <laughs> Um, asking if you could help with either carrying out the stuff on, on the 30th or coming to help us get it priced, et cetera, et cetera. But please see Linda. She will um, get you assigned in whatever duty that we need to get accomplished for this event. Summer camp is back. And with that said, home base is also happening. Um, there's some information I'm going to read to you about summer camp, but first home base we have registration forms available for anyone that wants to go. Please see me after church. I've got a few, and I'll give them to you for anyone that knows any young person that wants to go to home base. And we are going to uh, provide scholarships for everyone that wants to go. Um, there's one thing that's not in the announcements. There will be a meeting of the scholarship committee after service today. Please meet with Bev front pew. Can you, that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And uh, summer camp. There's some information about summer camp that I would like to share with you if I can find it. Um, the, uh, if not, I'll email it out today. There was a, a letter from Bishop that came down about summer camp, so I'll email it out to everyone today. Anyone interested in helping take part in Sunday worship, please see Mike Knoll. Uh, we are looking for someone, to, uh, people to do crucifer and acolyte, to light the candles each week. We don't care if you're 12 or 120. If you want to help with the worship service, we would love for you to take part. So please see Mike after service today, and he will get you signed up. Um, you'll also notice in your pamphlet booklet that there are some forms for um, ordering Bibles. We normally give one of those Bibles to every confirmand and anyone who comes to the church asking for a Bible. Um, we have uh, found a really good bargain that uh, you'll see in there that if you would like to buy a case, a half a case, a quarter case, or whatever you want to con contribute to the cause, um, we would love to, to get these out so we can spread the gospel a little bit more. Anything from anyone else? Great. So that was it. No announcements today then. And thanks to the choir, and to Heather and Jerry. We should have mentioned you, but we didn't. So congrats. thank you for your music and your talent. Um, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Remember that you are bound into a relationship of grace, whether you know it or believe it or not. So if you believe it, live it out. And I invite you to go with a blessing. Please rise if you're able. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Son. Thanks be to God.